What's up, guys? So it's here. Uh, Guild War Season 1 officially started. Um, the rewards are up for questions, but whatever. I mean, it's it's here, so I figured I would do some Guild War-related videos over this weekend to kind of get people in that mindset, or some people that are looking for some advice, or, you know, stuff like that. So what I have here in front of you, yeah, it's a tier list. It's kind of, sort of a tier list. But it's catered to a specific thing, which is a unit's baiting potential. Um, that's what I'm, what I was looking at primarily when I made this tier list, and I also considered, you know, team utility as well. But those are really the only two things I considered. You know, not how much damage they do or anything like that. Um, so I'll just go through the units real quick. I'll probably go through more of the typing. And not so much each individual unit, but I know for up top I'm going to go through each individual unit. So Dark Corvus is obviously here because he's Dark Corvus. He deletes anything he feels like deleting. Uh, he doesn't take a lot of damage. There's really no answers to him on a defense other than, you know, something that just has a ton of health that he can't get through. That's really the only way to counter a Dark Corvus. Um... Somebody might know this value better, more than, like, a little bit better than me, but I'm pretty sure, like, a 30k HP Corvus does around 20k damage. Somewhere in there. Um, and I think, like, a like a 25k HP Corvus does around 17. Um, somebody can correct me on that. That's just me throwing out guesses. Um, but yeah, that's, that's why Dark Corvus is here. You build your team around him and you win, pretty much. Uh, there's not really many answers to him on defense. So what people generally do is they make it to where both your teams lose to Dark Corvus, but they can only bring Dark Corvus to one of them. Um, and then if you're looking at, like, if you're in a regular tower, not really a stronghold or a fortress, and somebody wastes their Dark Corvus attack on you, and not everyone in their guild's going to have Dark Corvus. So if literally your entire guild builds all your teams to be beaten by Dark Corvus and nothing else... Like, of course, they're going to find other ways to beat them. But, you know, this is just for an example. Then they're going to run out of Dark Corvus attacks. So that's one way. To, that's the only way to be like counter him on defense is to have him run out of the tokens. So Fighter Maya, I put her here. Being straight, um, really any of these, uh, like, like if you go down the substitutions here, any of these light units could be up here because all five of these are amazing. Um, but this is... A bait tier list, not a bait and um, team utility tier list. So I put Fighter Maya up here instead because she does the bait job better than those four. But those four provide a little bit more team utility. You know, it, it also depends on how you have them built. Fighter Maya can be a lot more tanky than all four of those units down there. So that's why I put her up top. Um, if you can get a unit to focus on Fighter Maya, like your gold, your Gucci, like that shit. She's gonna take no damage. You don't. You need very minimal sustain to keep her up. How you could even throw her on something like Forest Totem, and she'll keep herself alive. You know, depending on what's hitting her. You know, there, there's niche stuff you could do with her, and she can also put out a decent amount of damage too, because she's a defense scaling unit. Uh, same thing with Crow and Corvus, really. Um, Corvus is a defense scaling unit. You can build him as tanky as possible with as much health as possible. He can sit there and take a unit. He's got self sustain. You know, nothing gets through Corvus. If you can guarantee their DPS attacks your Corvus, then you're you're in a pretty good spot. Um, obviously, it's different for three DPS teams. I'll wait until the end of the video to kind of talk about those. And then Crow does what he does the best. He's the best light bait or not light uh, ice bait in the in the game. Period. He brings a defense buff to the entire team. He's got great team utility. He brings a provoke. So if you bring him to take one, tank one unit, you can potentially provoke another unit. Let him soak up all the damage and delete something. Like, he's just amazing at what he does. Okay, Destina. Thing is, with Destina, like, there's really no good Earth tanks in the game. I put Destina up here because she can hold uh, Water's Origin. And she's got really good base stats for, like, health and defense. Like, she can take a beating. Um... That's why I put her there. I mean, the other option would be kind of Clurry, but people usually build their Clurries fast to um, get that Provoke off on something. 
in turn building fast sacrifices tankiness like with destina you don't really have to build her over 200 speed you can settle with her around 150 to like 170 and be pretty good with clurry you probably want her a lot faster therefore you're sacrificing tanky good stats and you'll need effectiveness on her as well so i think destina is just the best choice up here if i were to pick a runner up like this is second best it would probably be cartuja and i wouldn't have said this before i tested him but i actually brought him into guild war and tanked a kin fine he there's no threat as long as you don't have a, a defense break there or you can have like a dizzy paired with him to mitigate damage even on a defense break he can tank kin just fine he can tank kairon just fine he can tank any fire unit in the game just fine so if you really want to build Cartusia to be your Earth Tank for Guild War, then like go for it. He's not bad. One thing I will say is that he needs the cooldown reduction in his S3. At a minimum. So that's how I feel about him. You know, he brings attack down debuff too and brings a defense break. So he's he's a good unit. Um, my only issue with Cartusia is that he needs too many stats. So that's really it for Earth. And that's why Destiny and I have her up top. And then we'll go down to substitutions here, and I'll just talk about situations where, like, that element could help. The thing with Dark is there's really no light threats in the game other than, like, the only one that really comes to mind is Watcher Shuri. But Watcher Shuri is so easy to kill on defense that, like, really he would only be there for the speed imprint anyways, and they'd be running, like, ML Araminta and ML Bale on top of him. That's the only way I could see him really being used is for the speed imprint. And there's obviously the damage potential there. So tanking him isn't really an option. Like you cannot tank a Watcher Shuri. Uh, possibly with a Dark Corvus you can because there, there's I don't think there's a Watcher Shuri out there that can crit 30k out the gate with uh, no attack buff and no target. So Dark Corvus can probably tank him. I don't think any of these other units can, um, unless you build them all HP, which isn't optimal builds for any of these units. So, really, you just need a resist dark tank because of ML Araminta and ML Bale, if you're going to go that route of building one of those. And um, I think the best option for that would just be something that's immune. So I would go down here to Situation to deal with the only light threat that's really in the matter right now, and that's ML Araminta and ML Bale. And with that, you really want to resist tank, not a defensive tank. So that's how I would deal with those. And it pretty much covers all the dark. I mean, if you have a... If there's another unit on their team, and you can kind of manipulate them into attacking your dark unit, and they're not necessarily light element, like, these units would work for that. And then let's go on the light. Like I said, all these light units are good baiters, and they all provide great team utility. If you can get any unit to attack any of those, you're in a good spot. That's really all I could say about light. They're all good. And then going down the ice, um, they're really the only earth threats you see. I guess I'll go, let's go, let's go back to light. Like what dark threats do you see? Um, you see fighter, no, or for dark, you see um, ML Ken, you see maybe BBK, Fat Cat, um, Arbor of Ildred's the main one, but you need a different kind of answer to him. I, I tank his damage usually using like Crimson Armin, but he hits two units with his S1 anyways, so you really just need a different answer for him. But that's really all the dark threats. I mean, you might see the occasional Axe God too, but that's whatever. He's not hard to deal with. So, okay, uh, on the ice, like the only earth threats you see are Biken, Charles, and Violet. I mean, you might see it, the other ones every now and then, but they, they, they don't really provide anything to a defense. Um... They don't have great damage potential. They're not really tanky. Um, they don't have CR pushes. Like You might see Sid sometime too. Like Sid and Ruzid paired together is, can be threatening as well. So tanking that. Tanking a Sid is a little bit different because he's kind of like Luna. He hits what he wants with a speed buff. So you could bring an ice unit to tank his S1s after he does that initial S3. And all these would work well for that. Um, I don't think I would recommend... Like, Dizzy's kind of on the tail end of that just because she brings so many debuffs that mitigate damage. So you can use her as a tank unit if she's built relatively tanky. I tank a lot of damage with um, Dizzy all the time. Like, I'd bring her into Arbiter Vildred usually. And that really covers ice. I mean, and then on the fire, 
there's really no ice threats in the game. You might see the occasional Luna, and then you see Krau. And I'm not saying Krau is a DPS unit, but he is a threat. You need to tank him with something. Uh, Corvus is the best thing to tank him with. And then the second best option would probably be a high HP Ken or a K-Ron to take advantage of your immunity or like these other two units here or, you know, a Soul Weaver. But generally a Krau is going to hit you for 10 to 15k, maybe a little bit higher. Most Krau's. So you have to prepare to be able to eat 15k. Sometimes upwards of 18, hell, even sometimes 20, you know, if you get unlucky and you don't kill him and he's at 500 health. So that is what it is. I mean, k is really good for tanking that just because he has immortal, or, yeah, immortal, immortality. That's really it. I mean, you really need a fire unit to tank Krau. That's really the only thing you need him for. Luna's going to hit whatever she wants with her S3. Um, Corvus is also great for tanking Kisei because there's no cooldown on his S3. So if you happen to run into an Ice Kisei, she doesn't reset anything but his S2, which doesn't really do anything. So, those are really the only Ice threats that come to mind. And then there's Dizzy, but who hits everything anyways. So, you can't really tank her, or force her to attack anything specifically. Alright, so Earth. Um, fire threats. Ken, Ravi. Um, you don't really need to tank a Corvus. It's really just k Ron, Ken, and maybe the occasional Ravi. I, don't, I haven't seen a Ravi on defense yet, but I could see her put there. So you don't really have a need for Earth unit tank other than Ken. Like, it's really just Ken and k Ron. Like, let's let's be real. No one uses Ravi. So it's Ken and k Ron. You need something to tank Ken and k Ron. Destine is great for that because she can cleanse defense breaks off Ken. Like, if you run, like, Potion or uh, save your S3 to cleanse the defense buff or defense break. And then K-Ron, like, he's fairly easy to tank. He's more threatening with his AoE on his S1 with Dust Devil. So it's kind of like a, a whole team mitigation thing. So if you have, like, Crimson Armin on your team or an Arius on your team or something that wants to get hit, like, uh, really anything that wants to get hit. But Destina can tank his S3 just fine. Same with Clurry, same with Cartusia. Krau, or uh, Charles can tank his S3 sometimes. Um, I wouldn't recommend tanking a K-Ron with a Violet. Um, the only reason Violet's here is because I forced myself to choose four of them. And I didn't want to pick Lots or Armin. I actually think Lots would be better up here than Violet would. But Violet, you know, Dream Blade has a good chance to dodge. You can build him relatively tanky and he can still put out good damage. Like, I build my Violet tanky and he does decent damage, so that's why I put him up here personally. And that's really all the elements for the top baiters, I think. Um... I did a B team down here and try to put more in here. I literally just looked through every unit and it's like, okay, can this unit be used? Can this unit be used? Can this unit be used? And for most of these in B team, I was like, yeah, this unit can be used to bait. Um, I, let's let's uh, put you back down there. Um, like people say, like going through these, like Pylos, is, she's a great tank. She gets her own defense buff. Um, Sven has immortality. You can build X God like a bruiser. You can build S Rose like a bruiser. Um, Tanky Bale can tank damage just fine. Um, Doris, she's slow, but she has really great base stats. And you can build her somewhat as a tank. Crows it. He's a knight. He can tank. He can hold Arius. Um, I wouldn't recommend using him for PvP, but it is what it is. Zeno, high base defense. You know, he's got the same base stats as ML Bale here. She's just got great, stat, great stats to tank with. Rose, generally she's built fast, but you can build her as kind of like a damage soaker too. Luna, you can build her more as a bruiser. When her health gets low, you know, she can have Sigurds, recover health, and then she has um, good... Uh, and, and, and then her passive reduces chance to be crit and bust defense. So if you have her built more like a bruiser, she can tank damage really well. And then, of course, you got two more Soul Weavers here that can hold Water's Origin, you know. I'm not sure if Tamarin scales her healing off of health, but I know Akadis does, so Akadis generally going to be pretty tanky, or she you can have her built on resist. And then um, Charlotte, she's more of a bruiser, but she's kind of like the same thing as Charles. Um, she's a knight, so she can she can kind of tank damage depending you know on what you're fighting up against. I wouldn't try to tank a Luna with a Charlotte, for example. Um, that's really, like, she's just kind of here. Um, Maya, pretty sure she has an, uh, a group defense buff. 
And I know like when the EU servers launched, a lot of people were using Fire Maya on their defenses. Um, Ras, he's just a tank. Yeah, he's a meme. But he actually provides a lot of team utility with his S2. And if you can um, put him on a team where you can kind of stall out like with a Bruiser Luna, and then you have Ras and some kind of sustain, and you could save up souls, like you can just constantly chain every turn Ras goes, you can get a free Luna S2. I'm actually, I've actually considered building Ras for that, you know, that uh, kind of team. Because I think it would be interesting and it could beat a lot of teams out there, believe it or not. Um, he'd be a great soak, build him on decent HP, give him some decent speed. You don't have to make him do any damage. You don't have to give him any crit. You don't have to do anything like that. Just give him defensive stats and give him some kind of speed and then just save up some souls and then spam his S2 every turn. And then have another unit like Charles on your team or Luna, hell, even like Violet, anything that does a lot of damage with their S1 and then get free dual attacks over and over and over again every turn. Can be very good. So he provides some team utility there. Um, Pergus, you know, honestly, Pergus could probably go up and replace Violet, but I haven't personally built him, so I don't know how good he is. Uh, I know he requires a lot of investment to be good. Same thing with Lot, same thing with Ren. Armin is just another knight, so she's here. Um, Lots and Ren can hold Water's Origin and tank fairly well. Um, they, I think Lot scales his heals off of Ally's HP, but Ren scales off of her HP, so she's... And her damage scales off of her HP as well, so she's just a naturally tanky unit. You could build Ren like a bruiser if you wanted. All right, down the situation, or situational. Um, Arbiter Vildred, if you can guarantee that he dies and cleave the entire team, then it's great, have him take damage. Same thing with BBK. Uh, if there's really not a high damage threat potential there, I mean, granted, there's no light threat that you'd want to tank with BBK anyways. You wouldn't want to build a resist BBK, for example, so... You know, I just put her there because she is a situational unit to where she can take damage. Like, maybe if you, you have Fat Cat and her on Dream Blade and you want to uh, take chance, get hit with a couple misses, and then cleave their whole team, then more power to you. Bingo, I put him here because he has an invincibility buff. And I'm pretty sure if he soul burns it, it gives him two turns of invincibility. So he can potentially take damage really well. And then Gloom is here. Because she's a situational unit. She can really take care of Araminthas really well if you have her invested into. Montmorency is another resist tank. I put Rekoroi here, but realistically people build her fast because she's a CR pusher. And there's really no light unit you'd want to bait with her anyways. She doesn't have a cleanse, so it's really not great having her on resist either to tank Araminta. So, really, she doesn't really do anything here, to be honest. Let's get rid of her. And then Hazel, kind of the same thing. She's an attack scaling healer. I don't think there's any health scaling on her, so she she needs high attack to perform well. So she doesn't. She's not really a great baiter either. Let's just get rid of her too. And then you got your two resist warriors here that cleanse, like an old Strax. And then the just don'ts here, like you can use them, but I wouldn't recommend it. So that's the tier list. Hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed this, and it helps some people kind of get some gears turning like what units should i start working on to help out my guild war and here i gave you several options here sorry there's not many three star options or four star options like it, it's pvp like the best of the best units are gonna be mls they're gonna be five stars that's just the way the game is there's a couple four stars up here you have them you can you can build them but i would only go b team as a very last resort if you're looking to build a unit. Unless you're going to use that unit for something else as well. So like obviously you can have Luna built. You can have Bale built. Shadow Rose you can have built. The Kades you can have built. Like a lot of these units you can just have built for other things. And you can use them in PvP. Just fine. But like. Yeah. So if you enjoyed this video drop a like. Um, if you're new here subscribe of course. And um, if you have any specific questions. Something I didn't answer in here. You know, drop in the comments. I'll try and get back to you. Um, I'm starting to get a lot of comments now, so getting back to all of them is kind of hard, but oh well, that's not a bad thing. It means I'm pulling in viewers, which is cool. So you guys have a good one.